What is up, everybody? Jason here with Jaspies. We just sold out 23-24 Panini Mosaic Basketball Blaster. 20-box case. Pick your team number three, guys. And again, we're giving away $750 in break credit, guys. How to get an entry to that? You just have to buy two teams. You buy two teams, you get an entry. You buy four teams, you get two entries. Six teams, three entries. If you only buy one team or an odd number of teams, you're only going to get none or the even amount that you got. Then one winner at the end, $750. So like I said, at the end of the break, we'll see who has two or more. And we'll do that randomizer there, guys. But for now, let's do the break. So I don't know what happened, bro. Like, just like halfway through when Thomas got here, like around three or four, I just started getting like a little headache. And then like, I just felt like body aches. I don't feel sick. I just feel like, I feel like this. Like, I just want to just not do anything. It's just weird. I was fine all morning and when I got here. But, uh. I mean, I want to pull through, obviously. I'm not, I mean, I don't think I'm going to miss any days around that. It's just weird. It's like I just don't have energy right now. I mean, it is what it is. My like, bro, I was just sick for like two weeks a couple weeks ago, man. My first like flu cold in a long time. The last time I was sick before that was like uh, two years ago and I got strep. I usually don't really get sick every year. Maybe once. <laughs> yeah, right. God damn it, Thomas. I don't know, maybe my body was just like, Thomas is here and let's just not do anything, you know? Should just have Thomas break for me for the rest of the night and go home. He actually hopped over to Fanatics, but I think he's taking a lunch break right now. Michael left early today to have some dinner and then go to family or something, so... He took over there. Yeah, I don't know. Just feel, uh... Drained. Maybe I just need some caffeine or something. No way, right? Water? Oh. That's crazy. Why are they saying that in those areas? What's going on over there? I mean, September, October is usually the time of month where people do get sick a lot. Ah, that makes sense. You know what's crazy, actually, Rex? I live in downtown Long Beach, and I don't know if there was port strikes in Long Beach too, because the ports are right there where I'm at, uh, to the like left of my of me, like maybe two miles away. But um, uh, last week, I think my wife noticed on the map that it was just super red all over the place in the ports area, where it's like basically like traffic is just stuck and not moving. But then it hit, hit me, maybe they were also striking there. So I assume the Long Beach, you know, uh, Long Beach slash. Uh, San Pedro ports is probably a massive port. 
for Los Angeles, if not one of the bigger ones. But that makes sense. It's so crazy, man. You realize that, like, we buy so much things from other countries. And if something like that happens, bro, they could just delay shit for weeks. Oh, really? I mean, I didn't realize. Actually, we are probably the only country that uses toilet paper, to be honest. Everybody has bidets around the world, right? <laughs> actually, you're right, Frank. Take, I take what I gave back, but... <laughs> We're like the only country that actually uses like toilet paper. I've never used a bidet though. Colin Sexton, Brian Miller. Epic Kevin Durant. Sure. I mean, yeah, that's also, uh, people, you know, preparing for something that might not happen buys, right? Like COVID pandemic buys where everybody was just buying like 10 at a time and shit, you know? We always bring it up every once in a while, but man, those are wild times, man. I remember fighting for, <laughs> fighting for cases of water and toilet paper at Costco. Like it was life and death. Thankfully, my parents, though, they've always liked to be stocked in the garage that we had. So they definitely weren't ones to grab multiple, like, at one time. But what they would do, basically, is, like, when one of them was already, like, halfway, they'd buy one. And then buy another one a few weeks later. Kind of like whenever they were on specials, really. So when it came down to the pandemic, bro, like, my dad and my parents weren't, like, one of those guys where they bought ten at a time. They actually already had, like, ten. So, like, you know. They were kind of stocked already. But I remember when that all happened because I was literally serving a jerry duty a week, that week of the shutdown. Like, I literally finished my jerry duty service and then, like, three days later, the shutdown happened. And I remember all of us when we were, like, you know, speaking in the, uh, the room there, you know, to decide whether this guy was innocent or not. Uh, we were talking about how crazy Costco was and shit. It was so funny. Crazy times. And Jam Masters, Vince Carter. And Jam Masters Green, Victor Wembenyama. And uh, that's going to the Raptors and Zach. Spencer didn't what he read to two ninety nine. Lakers sack. Jam Masters, Kevin Durant.
finishing by subtraction, if you will. Allen has really excelled this season, leading the league in total QBR, ranking third in combined passing and rushing touchdowns. He's also the only qualified quarterback with no interceptions so far this season, something he has never done through four games of a season in his entire career. The Cowboys will be without Brandon Cooks for Sunday night's game in Pittsburgh. Dallas White on how to procedure on his knee if he won't follow the Giants game, then develop an infection in the knee. He's since had another procedure. Sources say Cooks might miss additional time. That was rookie wide out line. Florida could be activated for the game on any Sorry about that, guys. Nick was texting me. Yeah, Rex, right. so that was crazy times, man. Crazy. I didn't really go to the grocery stores that often, though, man. Like I said, thankfully for supplies wise, when it came to toilet paper, water, even disinfectants and shit, we actually had a decent amount, so. But obviously, if they, we went to the store and there was some there and we can you know take one whatever per limit we usually did but uh I never actually got to see a store empty though I mean it was probably way crazier in other states and cities like where you're at Rex here in Los Angeles it was crazy but I think there was enough stores where not every store was fully running out Yeah, that's true, dude. Yeah, the wick and stuff like that. Yeah, and like, obviously, unfortunately, so many people don't aren't able to really buy and stock up, right? So they're literally run out and then they go buy more, right? They run out, they go buy more. They're not like let's stock up on some formula, you know, a couple weeks or months worth. So yeah, no, I feel that. But like I said, I don't think it got that crazy thing for the here in California, though. There was more than enough stores. I had everything. Oh, for sure, yeah. Like, somewhere where you live, Rex? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I remember my barber, bro. My barber makes bank, man. He... Crazy, dude. He doesn't. He only does like walk-in appointments, and the whole his whole model changed during the pandemic. Like pre-pandemic, he had appointments, but it was like twenty bucks for an appointment, or walk-ins were like fifteen. So it's like, bro, why wouldn't you just do an appointment for five extra bucks? You know. And then when the pandemic happened, he had to close down his his barber shop. But the dude obviously knew a lot of us and had our phone numbers, so he was just like, hey, if you want to still get a haircut. I'm still cutting hair, just I'm cutting it at my house. And it's by appointment only, you know. And I think he charged like 25 or something like that, right? Just because obviously it's still kind of risky. Putting yourself at risk. And man, dude, he changed his whole life because so many people were like, hell yeah, dude, I'll schedule an appointment with you. And like, I don't mind paying 25 or something like that. So then when he finally reopened the barbershop when it was good enough, he basically just got rid of walk-ins. And just straight up appointments, 25 bucks. Like, it was a new norm, you know? And, like, now he doesn't even have to, like, worry about having slow days. His whole day is booked. From, like, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. He takes, like, a one-hour lunch in between, like, 1 and 2. But he cuts, like, three people's hair per hour. So imagine, he doesn't even charge 25 bucks anymore. It's, like, 35 bucks now. But imagine, like, 35 bucks per haircut... And he could be charging more. Because, like, places here, like, there's, like, this Floyd's right here that's down the street. They're, like, chains. They they charge, like, a minimum 35, 40 bucks a person. And then if you add, like, beard cutting and shit like that, it's, like, 50 bucks. Right? So, like, him charging 35 is a deal. But just imagine, bro, like, 35 bucks a person. You get to cut three people's hair an hour. And you're open from 7 to 7. So think of it, like, 10, at least 10 hours of, of barber, of cutting hair. He cuts you know, 30 people in a day at 35 bucks an, an hour or 35 bucks a person. Like he makes a thousand dollars a day. And guess what? Cash only, baby. Cash only. Think about that. Good for him, man. I've had him as my barber since I was a kid. Um, 
we used to go to this one barber shop down the street from my house when I was a kid. It was called Machos. And um, he started working there when I was like maybe six or seven. And uh, he cut really good hair. He came from Mexico, right? You know, immigrated. And um, a lot of people started just like saying, hey, I'm going to wait for that guy in the back. I'm going to wait for that guy. So at some point, people, other barbers were getting upset because nobody wanted to cut their hair with them. I mean, hair is sacred, man. Especially if you get haircuts all the time. And then eventually, like, kind of had a little discrepancies there with other people. And he was just like, bro, I'm bringing all the clients in here. So the lady at the time that owned the barbershop was basically raking money. Because I think he was only making, like, 5 out of the $10 or something like that, you know? So whatever he had, she got, like, half of it. So they had a little argument. And then all of a sudden, I remember he just told my dad, hey, can I have your number? <laughs> my dad was like, what? Why? I just, you know, just for the future. And then all of a sudden, one day we show up there and he's not there no more. So then we just cut hair with the other people that we used to cut our hair with. Eamon Thompson. And what do you know, like two months later, he calls my dad and says, Hey, set up a barber shop, you know, over here. It's not that far from where you're at. If you want to cut your hair with me? And we're like, yeah, sure. So I've been going since him since he was a kid, man. Or well, since I was a kid, sorry. So he's known me since I was a little kid. And uh, yeah, dude, he just, good for him, man. He makes bank. He works hard, though. Don't get me wrong. Standing up, cutting hair like that with your hands, carpal tunnel, all that, you know, for 10, 12 hours a day, it's tough, dude. He never had days off, actually, for a while, until he finally started taking Mondays off. Paolo Boncaro. Jam Masters, Paul. George. Yeah. So, yeah, good for him, man. I still go to him, too, to this day. His son actually cuts hair now, too. He got his son into cutting hair, and he has he actually rents a spot out for him, and he has like a second shop now, and his son cuts hair. So, yeah. something if he retires soon or something like that, I can always just go to his son. His son's like maybe ten years younger than me or something. He's like a young twenty year old. But yeah, that's crazy. All right, two more boxes here, guys. So, again, unfortunately, with, with Mosaic Blasters, I mean, it's kind of retail-ish, so you're not really going to get much. Kind of just stocking up on rookies and hopefully getting a good rookie green. Occasionally, like this one here, right? Get yourself a little numbered card. There's a lamella there for the Hornets. Going to Nick. And then, eventually, if we get lucky enough, we'll get, like, an auto. But, basically, it's just stacking up these rookies and colors, greens, and then... Realistically, at the end, someone's going to win some break credit, so a lot of these teams are pretty cheap, so fun little group great to get into, and then potentially win some money. And there you go, Max Christie, there you go, autograph. For the Lake Show, going to Zach. Another red, Jalen Brunson. For two ninety
Oh, sorry. Oh, I should pack there. Um, Eric, on Wednesdays, uh, Teddy goes live from like 10 to 7 p.m. So he goes on during the day. So he's pretty much off around 7, 8 o'clock sometimes. So, yes, nobody's live on the personals right now. If you wanted to rip a personal there, Eric, since no one's live, if I have some downtime in between group breaks here, I can rip a personal for you if you like. That's what I was doing yesterday. I was I was actually streaming on IG and ripping here on YouTube. So as long as no one's breaking on another platform like IG, I could rip it here for you guys. I like to do that. Joe doesn't like to do it, but I like to do it. So, I mean, if you're interested in buying something, I mean, I could rip it for you if you wanted to. You know, I think another break sold out. So, I mean, if you're interested, I, I can do it for you. And then, you know, I'll schedule you in. On the break schedule, to do a quick personal and then continue on with the night. But, but yeah, on Wednesdays, it's more of only day breaking. It's not really till 11 o'clock. We go on early for new releases and then we stay live till about 7 or 8. So. But we are live on, on Fanatics, which you can also do a Fanatics personal as well if you wanted to over there. Thomas and Claire on that side. Yeah, no problem, man. Just offering it to you if you really wanted to rip a personal, I could rip it here. If not, it's all good. So if you feel the itch, you're more than welcome to. If not, all good. You place it just let me know when you do it and then I'll put you on the schedule here all right guys so finally halfway through this break got these five boxes and five more and it looks like the uh, elite sold out so we'll be doing that momentarily after this about 15 or 20 and then uh, another group break that I think can sell out is, is uh, the five star down to two now the R&B so maybe we can shift to that that's the only other break I feel like besides the elite being sold out now that might go have a chance to go off tonight um, I mean NT's just spots away from those R&B's which we can still do that boys of summer's at 16 so I mean obviously like I said We'll be a little busy with two breaks pretty much selling out after this, so we'll see how the night goes. Taylor Hendricks. And we got a Derek White. It's 2 99 for Boston. Ooh, green. Scoot Thunder Road. Oh, 
Looks like we might have another auto. And Isaiah Livers. And a red Kobe Bufkin. Number to 299. Tigers, man. I think that's a pretty shock, pretty big shock and upset, right? Scoot Henderson. Victor Wembanyama, green. Playing the Padres in the next round. It's going to be very interesting, man. I'd be a lot, 100% confident if we were going into this postseason with all our top pitchers, but it's going to have to be a grind, man. We're going to really, really have to have some good starting pitching, like with Flaherty, Yamamoto, and then our relievers are going to have to be perfect, man. Like I said, we could beat the Padres, but... It's always just tough when you play against your own division in the postseason. But I think everybody has the Padres beating the Dodgers, which I don't blame them. <clears throat> I just can't wait for, like, so much people talk ish about Shohei if he like doesn't perform well in the playoffs. Like it's the dude's first time and like if he doesn't do well, so many people are gonna talk so much smack. I don't know, he's played in big games himself. In the sense of like, you know, World Baseball Classic with his team playing against the US. Sure Japan he had some Playoff battles over there, I assume. Yeah, Orioles, man. Those teams, man. Two years in a row now. 
But yeah, Otani these last like two weeks, honestly, three weeks, he has been lights out, man. He's showing a lot of emotion. He is competing. Uh, this is like a side of him that I think a lot of people have not seen. You know? It's like he's always been this like, you know, quiet, reserved, humble dude, but... Yeah, exactly. Now showing that he is human. And I think fi I think if anything, they find... I mean, whoever he speaks to, you know, it's like, dude, be yourself. Enjoy this, right? Like, be emotional, you know. Enjoy when, when you guys are, are, are winning and doing well. You know, but then also, too, <laughs> you know... It, when you lose, it's going to hit you harder, but, but you know, at the same time, like, you do the best you can to try to not feel that way and feel the good times, you know? And, yeah, dude, he's been, he's been like, dude, I'm telling you, like, two, three weeks ago, literally, he, he was batting, like, 280-something. He wasn't even above 300, and then he went on a crazy run and then got to, like, 309, 310. Basically, almost won the Triple Crown. Yeah, I like this Otani now. I don't know if the Angels just restricted him or anything like that, but, like, all I know is that once he became a Dodger, we found out that he loves more than just a dog. He's getting married. He has a wife. <laughs> you know, like, we learned so much this year about Otani, which, I don't know, in, in the Angels, I don't know if they wanted to just keep him quiet or he just wasn't comfortable enough to share his personal life. But on the Dodgers, he's just open book over here. Sure, but I mean, he just—I don't know. Maybe he just hired a new PR team, or I don't know. I'm just saying, like, it's, he was very to himself. Feels like over there. The minute he came to the Dodgers, it's like either they forced him to do it, or he just felt comfortable enough with the Dodgers PR team and management and everything like that, and just wanted to finally share, share what he does with his life, personal life, that is. Derek Lively. Lively Green. about those brewers though man finally got on the dub column Brandon Pazinski All right, last stack here, guys. All righty, guys. So there you go. So we did manage to get a couple numbered cards, a couple autos. But really just stacking up on the bigger rookies like Wemby Scoop.
Pods, Miller, etc. But now, lively. Let's give away some uh, break credit, though. Besides stocking up on these rookies, I'm sure you wanted to win some money. So yeah, got a Wemby, two autos, and then got a couple like reds in here. Buffkin, Jarek White, Brunson, Lamelo Ball, Spencer Dinwiddie. There you go, guys. Let's switch scenes and let's do some break credit giveaway. So we added by two or more teams. Top name gets 750 in BC. So Carlos with two, Don with two, that's an entry each. Greg with two, Sport Port with two, that's an entry each. Ken with two, Mark with two, entry each. Matthew with four, that's two. Nick, that's six, so that's three. Nico, six, that's three. Sad with the Lakers and Spurs. All right, out of the possible 15, we got 15. Roll. Two and a three, five times. One, two, three, four. Greg, last spot mojo. Congratulations. I think you won some break credit or something earlier, right? So two hundred three five times. There you go. You win some more. So that's seven hundred and fifty dollars. Congratulations, man, after five times. So I'm gonna send that to you right now. Before I forget. And yeah, Greg, you won three hundred earlier in Boys of Summer. Hell yeah. Got some spending money at Jaspies. Congratulations again, man. Um, again, um, that's going to get sent to the email that you use on your uh, order sheet. So check the spam or, you know, check your email, inbox, stuff like that. Um, yeah, congratulations again. Uh, we're not going to post another one of these up, uh, but we do have other breaks that's giving away some break credit, guys. Thank you guys so much. Jaspies, casebreaks.com.